welcome back to my channel here on YouTube. Um, I'm glad to be here again and I'd like to welcome you if you are a new viewer. My name is Brittany and here on YouTube I have a little channel where I talk about all things fiber related. A lot of knitting and some spinning, occasional crochet and um, whatever other things I tend to get into. Um, this is the hat episode. <laughs> I've got several hats that I've made since the last time I came to chat with you guys. Um, I am in Whitehorse, Yukon, which is in the traditional territory of the Kwame Dunn First Nations in the Ton Kuchin. And it is a rainy day today. I'm wearing everything cozy. I've got candle lit. Just had to check my plant there. <laughs> um, and yeah, so I'm all cozy. It's about, I think it's like below 10 degrees today and it's just been raining all morning. So I took the kids to school and daycare and came home and felt like um, taking advantage of this low light situation because it's perfect for, for taking a video. So, um, I'd love to show you what I'm wearing. So I, let's start with my head. I, this, actually I showed this before on the channel. This is my hand spun hat, which is a broom, the broom hat. Um, I should have looked up what that word means, but this is by Melody Hoffman and has a really nice crown decrease. This is like my go-to pattern this and the stardust hat that I showed in the last episode, they're my go-to patterns for hats. Um, it's um, a one-by-one -one ribbed hat. And again, like I said, a nice nice uh, crown decrease. So it fits really nice on my head. I love the, sh I love the fit of this hat. And I use my hand spun yarn. And this was with a blend of fibers that I made in honor of my grandfather, Larry. And... So yeah, there's some uh, hand processed fleeces in here. So Nora, the Tansy Twins, there's some Herdwick, which is a very uh, coarser, full of Kemp kind of fiber. Some Yukon wool, or at least I think this one actually had some Cotswold in it from Lone Sequoia Ranch. Um, can I, I always feel like I'm leaving out one. Oh, alpaca, some Yukon alpaca. Or might be Manitoba and alpaca. The recipe kind of changes as far as like exact fibers and where they've come from, but, but for the most part, they're about these these colors. And going forward, this exact blend I won't be able to make anymore because the Tansy twins, they're lambs every year, and from Tansy and the lambs are different every year. And if they're males, they are fiber weathers, and they go to support a family with their meat. Um, and then if they're used, then they get, um, I don't know if the word is called, or they'll, they'll mature and then um, they'll be bred. So I think Tansy had a, a U this year, so I'm looking forward to seeing um, what Tansy's offspring produce. Because I think she's never actually had a, a U until this year. So anyways, if you're new, um, those are just sheep that are from Alberta that I often uh, work with. Their fleeces, and I also get some uh, custom spun yarn from the same flock. So Sierra at Crocus Country Shepherdess on Instagram has a wonderful flock of Gotland cross sheep. Uh, the current lambs from this past year are higher percentage blue faced lusters, so their fleeces are really crimpy and curly. Um, they're beautiful. They're really, really lovely. And Torfall is the sire to most of them, or all of them. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Torfall's been featured. And I'm going to show a shawl here later on with all of the fleeces that I've had custom um, spun at a mill here in Canada. Uh, the sweater that I'm wearing is the Lennox Cardigan. I always say cardigan. It's because I, I test knit the cardigan for toddlers. This is a Lennox pullover and it's knit bottom up. I'll just stand up for a moment. I've shown this on as an FO before and there's this lattice stitch here. 
And my stitch definition is what I would say more muted because I didn't use a spun yarn. I used a yarn called Nutidin. And this is the colorway Tallbark. It's really wonderful. I love how it changes so much in different lighting. If it's sunny out, you can see the golden tones in this, um, this colorway. And right now it's looking more mauve or even brown maybe. Uh, I knit this with two strands and uh, so this is a test knit. It's not a pattern that's released yet, the Lennox pullover, and it has a really nice uh, construction. Most people don't like knitting bottom up, but I actually found it an incredible um, challenge to focus on um, Paying attention to your gauge as you're knitting, because as fabric gets bigger, often it gets heavier and your row gauge could change or, or whatnot. And in this pattern, it was very important to keep the the row that you create the lattice stitch um, taut and so that um, you wouldn't lose, uh, you wouldn't be making the garment too big by your row gauge becoming less and less rows which means it grows. <laughs> the tighter the rows, the, the smaller the garment, the, the looser the rows, the larger the garment. It's an interesting one to wrap your head around with gauge, but yeah, so with this pattern I started with the sleeves, um, cuff up. Yeah, so we did the sleeves first. I always love having my sleeves done as soon as I can. Especially if I'm doing raglan down, I'll split for sleeves, knit about an inch, and then cast on the sleeves and get those done because I just love getting the body done and being done. For some reason, just mentally for me, that just makes sense. So um, Anna did a really wonderful job in her pattern describing how to create this raglan uh, decrease. There's a twisted stitch here and the sleeves are all reverse stockinette and if whole sweater is entirely knit inside out so if you're a stockinette lover this is a good pattern and if you want a pattern or a sweater in your wardrobe that's gonna be timeless and will be with you forever this is it I absolutely love this sweater um, <sighs> Yeah, so I, I think I've put my information on my Ravelry, <laughs> on my Ravelry page. I can't remember. I have put it all on there. I think I was. Anyways, um, if you do follow me on Ravelry, I you might be able to see my project. I don't know. It's inputted as a test knit, so I don't know if because the pattern's not launched, I don't actually know if you can see my my test knit there. But anyways, if you do go to check it out, <laughs> let me know if you see it. <laughs> you can see what needles I used and um, measurements that I did. I think I think I still need to add some more information. But anyways, that's what I'm wearing. <laughs> uh, oh, I forgot to see. Um, you can find me on Instagram as uh, Crux Fibers. Same on Ravelry. I don't use Facebook, but I think my business page is up there, but I don't post anything to it, so there's no Point going there and I have a website and it's www.cruxfibers.com you can find me there and my shop is fairly empty right now because I'm preparing to go to some yarn festivals that um, I will mention here in a little bit so there we are and I forgot to grab a cup of coffee I wish I had a cup of coffee so I might just pause the video and go and grab a cup of coffee <laughs> one sec All right, there we go. Now that feels even more cozy. <laughs> I'm a black coffee drinker. What about you? What do you like to drink when you're getting cozy? Um, I'm gonna fog in my glasses. Um, I am drinking this out of a cup I just received. I actually just posted about it on my Instagram page. Um, it's handmade, hand pinched by um, a new friend of mine out of Germany. And it has some words that are sketched in with the one side. And here it says, on, on Heinz's feet, he will enable me to go on the heights. And it's from a favorite scripture verse. Uh, a 
about a deer and uh, strength, courage, being brave, courageous. Yeah, going on the heights. <laughs> so it's a huge mug, huge, and actually have um, a cup as well that has um, a scripture on it as well, but in German, and it's just a nice big cup. Same shape, just without the handle. So, yeah. So um, I have some finished objects for you. I have five finished objects. I have two whips and one little acquisition to share and a future project I hope to cast on to reward myself when I'm finished doing my sample knits. So I'm going to start with the first hat that I cast it on right away. I don't I don't think this was on the last episode. I should really watch the last one and see if I posted this, but I don't think so. Um, Leanne from the Nitty Stew always has been talking about um, On the Sea Train by Espas Trico um, several times on her podcasts and I decided to cast one on as well. I really love ribbed hats um, with simple, um, just simple construction and decreasing. Hats are so simple, are so easy and just like Leanne, hats are my go-to instead of socks. Um, this, there's a little pin here as well that, um, says the Yukon. This came from Loretta here in Whitehorse. We finally got together after months and months of not being able to get together. And she, um, had a, she has a bag of these pins from the Yukon and Canadian pins. So I just love it. I love it. Little Yukon pin. So, um, what did I knit this in? I knit this in a Canadian unspun yarn that I used to offer in my shop that I've just gotten back. Um, they're plates like this. They're actually much bigger, but I've used some of these, so they're they're looking about smaller. Uh, the breeds in here are typical Canadian cross breeds, and it comes from sheep's wool, lamb's wool, <laughs> duh, sheep's wool. And this is like the warm tone, light gray. I would say it's um, looking a bit oatmeal-y. It is light gray. There's spinning oils. In it so once you wash this it lightens up in color as well um, and it is let me show you a strand it's a typical pencil roving and because these are Canadian breeds a lot of Canadian breeds are um, meat sheep and their fleece they lamb twice a year so their fleeces are are more of the down breed so really crimpy shorter fibers um, and often are very good for woolen spinning so this comes from a woolen mill that spins um, a fingering singles that i offer in my um that i have offered in my shop and that will be at knit city and a two-ply worsted and that's all that i've gotten from them and i get the natural shades so from white through to the grays to then dark grays so i'm really excited to show those yarns off soon but not in this episode so I knit that in this, I held two strands double, and I knit it with the needle recommended. Uh, this is a free pattern from Espace Tricot called yeah, On the Seat Train. And you can, you can fold up the edge, but I think this hat I prefer just, just like this. So yeah, um, it is, so lamb's wool, it doesn't mean that it's soft like cashmere or merino, but I actually blocked this in, um, I soaked it in hot, hot water. I just submerged it, I didn't agitate it. And then after the first wash with um, power scour that I use, or even Dawn dish soap is good enough. Um, after the first soak, I took it out, wrung it out, and then I filled up another pot of water with um, it's a wool conditioner. If you don't have a wool conditioner, you can just use hair conditioner and And what that does is it softens up the, the fabric And so that's what I did to make sure that this rustic wool felt a little softer I don't really have an itch factor except for like this hat here my Larry hat um, The broom hat in my Larry hand spun um, has uh, Herdwick in it so it can feel a bit itchy sometimes, but if you use that um, conditioner method of uh, soaking 
your rustic wools in, it really softens up. So that was the first hat. And then the second hat I immediately cast on after that one was another Jason's cashmere hat. So these are samples I'm knitting for Knit City and Edmonton Fiber Frolic. And this one has cables. You can see some, you see this? That's Kemp. That's uh, some of the wool that is in this blend. Um, this one feels a little more coarser than the lighter gray. Uh, it's the same gauge as far as the, it looks about the same gauge as the, the light gray. So here's the, the dark. And so it's impossible to know exactly all the breeds that are in here, but Canadian gem breeds. Uh, and the cables turned out really nice in this pattern. I'll just show it one, once more. Uh, I held two strands double, and this pattern I went down in needle sizes. Because I like the gauge of this this hat, and then with the Jason's Cashmere hat, which is I think knit in a DK weight yarn, or Aran weight actually. Actually, I don't remember. I'll have to uh, I'll have to think about it again and put the information down below. But I don't know gauge swatch, <laughs> or just yeah. I don't. You know you know when you like you uh. You make something and you're like, oh, I'll remember that bit of information. Easy peasy. I do that a lot and then I forget what I did. <laughs> so I have to look at the pattern and then once I know it, look at the pattern, then I'll remember, I think. So this is um, a, sn a more snug hat to the head. This one is a lot, a lot looser on my head. Um, I didn't stretch it. I just soak it lay it out and I, if I feel like it needs more length then I'll stretch that way but typically with my hats I don't ever stretch them wide because they're gonna they're gonna stretch out once you start wearing them so this one is uh it's a rolled brim uh, you could wear it without it being rolled but I don't really like this pattern stuck up like that <laughs> this fabric wants to be more stiff so I could have probably gone down in, in needle gauge but um I because it's unspun yarn uh, it can tend to relax it relax out a bit more because there's no major twists um, but when you are working with hand, um, unspun yarn the the interesting thing about that when you're holding your yarn and you're going in to take create a stitch um, you're naturally adding a twist to that unspun so a very minor mild uh, twist to the yarn but that in itself can add a bit more strength and structure in, in the final object. So yeah, Jason's cashmere hat and on the sea train hat are free patterns on Ravelry or on their websites. If you just simply Google Jason's cashmere hat, it'll come up. Um, I think even Ravelry just takes you to a website. So those are two very accessible patterns that are free and I'll link them down below. Uh, the third hat that I wanted to knit was one that I would hold the, the yarns single strand. So this is the Foxtails hat by the Petite Knitter. She's in Nunavut, Canada. Um, so I'm in the Yukon far west, uh, far northwest. She's in the far northeast, probably further south than me, I think. I don't know, if, I don't remember if she's in the Calouette. She might be. Anyways, so um, I, took the light gray and I did, um, this is a double brim. And so I used one strand and I'll show up close again with the one strand looks right. It's really nice. And for the brown I used, so what this yarn, this unspun gets spun into singles and the brown is what you're seeing, the unspun spun into singles and that I've dyed be relaged. I showed a sock I was knitting on. I'm just not really into socks these days. I'm trying to knit socks, but it's just not working. It's not happening. So I took the brown and I used that for the foxes and the accent details. And as you can see, the dark gray, there's only the ears on the, the fox heads. And this was the size two. I was thinking I was going to end up with a bigger hat. 
but this um, it doesn't quite fit my head because I knit the size two, which the size three then has another pattern repeat down below before, sorry, you have another repeat above the, the, the brim before you continue on with this sort of zigzag and carry forward. So this fits my daughter perfectly and on my Instagram feed, I um, shared a photo of Sybil wearing it. So my daughter Sybil loves this hat and she wore it one morning we were playing outside in our backyard um, and I brought it out to her as soon as I finished it and she wore it the whole morning with the sun it was mornings here are crisp so we can get away with having hats and sweaters in the sun so here's my float side with my ends not woven in and I was catching them about every two to three stitches just to make sure that this unspun isn't compromised with long floats and Something I love to do with uh, with unspun, if I especially in color work, if, if I think that um, the floats are too long, is after after I finish the garment and I block it, I turn it inside out, and then I can take just a, a needle felting kit and just needle felt those floats into the fabric. Um, they can naturally do that with just wearing it, but with the needle felting kit, you can just push those fibers into themselves and. There you go. This is a added in edit because I forgot to talk about one hat. <laughs> um, I was a test knitter for Larks Burnitz on Instagram for her Sugar House toque. Um, with this lovely hat and all the details. It's a uh, knit and pearl. Just, uh, texture. Uh, this is a lined hat and the inside is knit with Surrey alpaca but I didn't have enough of the white to hold it double so I also so I held a strand of Surrey alpaca that's bare with a bare skein of silk mohair so I used some stash and I didn't know if I'd have enough but I also had some leftover of this color and I thought it'd be kind of nice to have a pop of different color would have looked equally as nice with just like um, just white oh it's not showing very well I'm not doing a very good job with that anyways um, yeah so I knit the size 3 and use the needles recommended and then the main color is my hand spun yarn which is the Tansy Twins Blended with uh, Wensleydale, Tessa Silk, and mohair. A little bit of mohair. And a teensy weensy bit of Corydale for accents of color. Uh, this is a really cozy hat. It's um, a nice... Uh, it should have more slouch, but because I knit the size three, it's for like a youth or something. My head's not massive. Um, I knit the smaller size, so the, the crown length could be longer for my head. Uh, but I like it. It's it's one of those hats that I think it's just going to sit, you know, at the back of my head. It's not going to be one of those hats that I'm using for major warmth, but it is very warm. Anyways, this is, yeah, a test knit for... Lindsay of Larkspur Knits, and she just released a book called um, Salt and Timber, featuring I think 13 patterns. I think so. Yeah. So I, yeah, I had a really good time knitting this hat. I want to knit another one. I'm just not sure I have enough time with all of my other sample knits that I'm working on. So yeah, when this pattern gets released, definitely go and grab it. It's really it's really lovely. You are essentially knitting two hats, but you're putting them into one. So, reminds me of the uh, Musselberg hat, which same like you know starting small, doing a tube, and then decreasing. But oh, this is a feature I really love in this hat: is the decreases creates this little star. Isn't that cute? It's so cute. I love that. And so on the back of your head, it just looks really cute. I appreciate details like that, paying attention to, um, you know, 
the experience that you have knitting it and as well as the you know the final look uh i love this kind of minty green this is the kind of uh, non-earthy tone i love to wear i don't actually have a lot of it but there's it's a feat it's been featured in a few things um as accents i like it as a pop of color so yeah there we go that's that um and then my final object I, was a shawl I was showing you guys last time. It's my Find Your Fade by Andrea Mowry. And there's 13 sheep in this shawl. It is a giant shawl. I knit this thing in less than two weeks. <laughs> because I couldn't put it down. I was so proud of being able to use the yarn from my favorite flock. So I'm calling it my single flock fade because it's an entire shawl made with a single flock and I have the yarn that's going to be at Knit City and I have I have the I have about 8 kits I can offer out. So is this the the back side? So we started with this here. I just use the needle size recommended. The black here is Rona and Esther and they are the darkest and higher percentage of Gotland. They look more like uh like they have a mohair halo. Um, that's what Gotland is often referred to in its characteristics. So, um, ca sorry, compared to mohair as far as its characteristics in the final fabric and also some of the spinning, um, higher percentage Gotland is a lot harder to spin and it requires less, way less twists or else you create rope. To which twist you just create rope. So as you can see, it's not the perfect fade into the next color, but once I put this on, you'll see how nice it is to have this interesting contrast from one end to the next end. And here we go. I forget all the sheep names, but I will list it below so you can see. I mean, I don't remember the order. I think this might be Mick and Mabel. I might have it backwards. <laughs> I know Barbara and Ray is in one of these. And Maz, Morona, I think. And so there's eyelets, like lace, and mostly garter. So you have these panels of simple garter, simple lace, and the the one end, the wingspan, ends into this nice, very pearl gray color. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, I just love this. This was. A real pleasure to knit. It's the it's an um, when an A-line shape I think it's called. I'm gonna stand up and show you from the back so you can see. On my Instagram page, I created a reel with a slow motion video so you can see how this shawl flows. It's just huge, hey! Look at that. I just oh I love it. It is such a nice, beautiful shawl and. I start by wrapping this side down this way and then bring this up so the point is at about here and then wrap around this way and then I'm just I'm just draped in these 13 fleeces and there we go, it's just, uh, it's wonderful. I feel so proud and I would love to make another one for the shepherdess. I just don't think I could <laughs> work another one. Uh, so far for Sierra, I've knit her a hat and I've knit her a cowl and um, some of my hand spun and my last mill run from her flock. And so as I have the time, I like to, I like to make her some things from her flock because she works really, really hard. And I think she has something like 50 some sheep now, maybe more. I can't, it's a lot. She's getting up there and she's hoping to go, you know, full time with her business. So I would love to continue supporting her. Gotland is a beautiful fiber. It's lustrous. Uh, it doesn't have high crimp. So you're not going to, you're not going to get anything super, super fine or el um, elastic because Scotland doesn't have a lot of elasticity, but it has a lot of drape, and I really love drape um, in certain projects, um, like this shawl. Actually, this the drape in the shawl was is just perfect. I'm so thrilled. 
and I look forward to being able to have more mill runs of this yarn. Donna at Wellington Fiber Mills did a wonderful job, um, wonderful job at spinning these yarns. I know she had a heck of a time spinning this black because it's such a higher percentage of Gotland, but she took it as an, as an opportunity to learn. And next time, if I send her these fleeces, she'll know how to spin them. So here we go. Those are all my finished objects. And yeah, are you uh, are you enjoying what you're knitting on? Um, what you're crocheting? Are you spinning anything? What new? What I would like actually, yeah, I would love to know what new um, what new yarns you've come across, or what. Uh, maybe something that you've learned recently in your crafting journey. Is there anything new that you would like to share in the comments below about something? Um, a technique? Um, some interesting facts about wool that you'd like to share with the rest of us? Uh, if there's anything, please um, please comment below. And <laughs> Yeah, I really, really love to hear you com um, read your comments and um, some of you have shared my podcast on other um, social media platforms, and I really appreciate that. And some of you have tagged me in your own podcasts, and that's really um, that's really humbling. And I'm really grateful that you want to share in my journey as well, in in all of these wonderful fiber crafts. So I would love to show you what I was what I've been working on. I'm. I actually have only two projects, but I have three projects. The other one I just forgot to bring over, but I haven't made any progress on it, so I won't bother talking about it. So the first one is um, a dress that I'm knitting, that I'm hoping to be able to wear at one of the days at Knit City, and also at Fiber Frolic. Uh, it's in the round, so there's there's really no stopping mid-row or anything like that. So this is the Easy Eyelet Yoke Dress by uh, knititude, knititude, and so it starts up here. There's a double, double coll collar, eyelet um, increases, and then I have my sleeves already done. Because, like I said, I like getting sleeves done, and then I have the waist. That's where my waist is. That line there, right here. This is where my natural waist falls. And now I'm just working on the skirt. So I think I have several inches left to go. Uh, I was hoping to be able to knit this dress with just two balls of this yarn, which is a Corydale yarn, just bare yarn that I'll be offering in my shop soon after the fiber festivals. So what am I, what is my contrast color in here, hey? Um, well, not contrast, but anyways, this is Ptarmigan. This is a mohair. Ptarmigan is one of my most fly. Um, I guess most loved neutral speckled kind of color. I don't do a lot of speckled yarns anymore, um, but ptarmigan is one when my kids are not home, um, then I will die. And so it's got a nice natural, or not natural, sorry, uh, blue and gray undertones and then rusty speckles that often can appear with red specks, orange, yellow, um, I think that's about it really. But it's a really loved colorway, so I decided I would showcase the mohair. So I'm using um, the Corydale, but the main star of the show is the is is the ptarmigan. So that is that. I'm almost done, and I went I, when I did my gauge swatch. Um, I had to go down a needle size, so I'm using a five millimeter on my Haya Haya Sharps, which are new needles to me, and I love them. I wish all my needles, needles were Haya Haya Sharps. I love how they attach. Um, I love how pointy they are. I'm a continental knitter, and I like to have all my needle, all my stitches squished up here so I can just grab and move pretty quickly. And I, uh, I just, I love to knit, and I love to have a, a good flow. So these, um, these are pretty good. And they're a bit slippy with the mohair, uh, but I feel like I've got decent control and just carry on. So, yeah, I find with the metal needles, my row gauges are 
my row gauge is off. But if I go down to wooden needles, then my row gauge seems to match up. But this pattern um, goes by um, not rows, but by uh, measurements. So that's easy. It's nice to just use a needle that you can get your stitch gauge and not worry about your row gauge. Um, and then finally, I haven't shown this on the podcast yet, but I started working on this well before several other projects. Um, but because it's not part of the things I'm planning for with these festivals I'm going to be vending at, it's been sort of my, I'll pick this up if I, as a reward to knit on. And I'm using my hand spun yarn and this some Surrey alpaca. And the pattern here is the Field Shawl by Max the Knitter. I wanted to knit this for so long and I finally finally casted it on. I spun this yarn specifically for it. Um, it's a nice moody moody shawl. I'm showing it to you backwards. Oopsies. Here we go. This is the right way. So you can have it's quite a lot quite a wide wingspan. Like quite a wide. The decreasing slowly happens. And the Surrey alpaca here is the light gray. This is a colorway called Raven, and it's actually dyed by Comfy Cozy Knits. And, and so I'm on the decreases. I'm at the other end of the wingspan, so I, for, I didn't, or I, the last time I counted my stitches, I think I was at like 70 something, so I got a long way to go. There's a really nice I-cord edging right there. And then the hands one, my fibers, this here comes from Artifacts of Appreciation, the fibers do. She did a shawl, uh, shawl, I guess, shawl bat update. So there's two bats and I knew I wouldn't have enough to make a shawl. So I created, I blended my own bat to, with similar fiber contents and about the same amount of color content percentage. And I spun that and that is near the end here. Right here, so this is my blend and this is her blend. So there, I mean, it's hard to tell right now, but pretty close. Yeah, so it's a nice, stretchy, squishy, oh so delicious shawl. The Field Shawl by Max and Knitter. Um, I have three more things I'd like to share with you. I'm gonna start with, um, a project I'm hoping to cast on. It's going to be my um, my treat for finishing samples. <laughs> I ha so in the past I've knit um, the shift cowl or the shifty the shift cowl by Andrew Mowry, and people have been knitting it again lately. And I've reserved this yarn for it, um, and I've just been waiting to finish my samples before I can cast on. Because I know if I cast this on, I won't stop because mosaic knitting is, is fairly addictive. <laughs> Anyways, so this is my hand spun yarn. This one here is um, some Canadian wool blended with alpaca and labradoodle. I have shown you this on the podcast before. And it is the fuzziest and warmest yarn I have ever spun. It's a two ply. It might be a bit light for this shawl, but sorry for this cowl, but I feel like I'm close enough to a, a sport weight gauge. We'll, sh we'll see. I'll just uh, swatch and I have a lot of yarn, so I can always just make it bigger if I need to. But anyways, I mean, yeah, I've knit the shawl, uh, the, the cowl before. So I've got this. It's very squishy and um, so soft and it does not smell like dog, just so you know, in case you're wondering. Uh, this is also another hand spun of mine I've shown on the podcast before. It's a very beautiful emerald green. This is a bat that I um, did a swap with Akara Yarns. And I spun this. This was really wonderful to spin. <laughs> Two ply, yardage unknown, gauge unknown. But we're going to go with it. And then uh, some more Akara. So she had this uh, uh, dyed, I think it's an untreated merino I think so 
Uh, I actually spun two of these. I had a third one that I was going to spin, but instead I chose to blend it in backs. But So this is a two-ply fractal. Uh, I have no idea how it's going to knit up because it's only two-ply. If it was a three-ply, it might have a little bit more color shifting throughout. And if you would like to know what a fractal spin is, it's just simply you have a long braid that's dyed in with chunks of color and you can split the braid lengthwise and you spin certain amounts of, or you just keep splitting the braid down into multiple strands. And the first strand you can spin tip to tip and the next strand you can split that one down into even more strands and spin tip to tip. And then the third one you can split down into even more strips and then spin tip to tip. It's probably not the best explanation but what you get is a shifting of um, fading and then quicker fades. So you have one long fade singles with a quicker faded singles and an even quicker faded singles. So you get these color transitions happening slow, fast and faster all together. And so you get this shifting yarn that fades and melds together. It's really cool. So I'm hoping to cast this on as soon as I'm done my samples. Um, I know there's a West Knits Cal mystery cowl coming up, and I do plan on doing that one, but we shall see. We, sh we shall see. Uh, the final thing, I wanted to, well, it's not really the final thing. Someone asked about Agnes, our bunny, and so I thought I'd chat a little bit, maybe at the end. So, uh, my good friend Eden from Crafting Kraken made, uh, makes these beautiful progress keepers. She's doing a sale, massive sale on all of her polymer clay stitch markers, progress keepers, but I don't know, maybe over a year ago, I got her to paint these, um, these progress keepers as part of a club that I was offering. And so what she did was she hand painted on little on paper, these tiny, tiny little circles, and then she put them into a casing and filled them with resin and added hardware for it to be a progress keeper. And they were beautiful and they were sparkly, and she's just started redoing doing those again, and I wanted to show you because I think you all need these in your life. Um, let's see. So this is her hand-painted stitch marker. Let me see if I can get that glare away. And you can see some sparkle. And so this is a scene. I forget what this one's called, but it's like oh, maybe a sunset. And she lives on the Vancouver Island. So this is one. And this one I think is called Sailor's Delight. That's one I always remember the name of. So she hand paints these with watercolor and acrylic. I think these ones might be acrylic. And here's the final one. And Eden, I've talked about on this podcast before. I love her. I adore her. And here's your show notes for Eden. Wait one sec. Come on. Come on, Glare. Go away, Glare. There you go. Crafting, cracking, made. These are stitch stoppers that I got from Autumn Poppy Designs. I don't know if she has any more in her shop, but she does regularly do updates on stitch stoppers. So these are cute. Right up my alley. Just like vintage and floral. So I've been enjoying those. Right. So, so um, someone in the last episode had commented saying they'd like to know more about uh, our rabbit because they would like to have a rabbit in their house or they want to know a bit more about how we have our rabbit in our house um, as a regular pet. So we do and we don't. Um, Agnes is a white satin angora cross. She produces this white wool, she's shedding again, and she's not a fan of me. I come into where she is right now and she uh, immediately goes and runs into her litter box. So rabbits are funny, they like to hang out in their litter box, do their business and eat their hay in their litter box. <laughs> so when she's not in heat, I let her roam around our house because she's not peeing and pooping everywhere. But because she's currently in heat and it can last up to like 30 days, uh, if I let her out, I have to 100% be focused on her because she'll jump onto our couch or she'll go downstairs and jump onto our little chairs down there as well and pee on our, our chairs. Now, we also have a cat in our house called Heidi. She's She is spayed. 
our bunny is not spayed. So because she's not spayed, she's territorial and will spread her scent using, you know, her urine. So I've got this special cleaner that can get it out of like the couches. Bunnies like soft and cozy places. So they'll go where it's soft and cozy, like in the corner of your couch. <laughs> so she is in what I call bunny jail, which is our big bathroom. And I go and see her all day long, bringing her veggies and giving her lots of pets. So she's loved. She's just stuck in bunny jail right now. But when she is spayed, then she'll be out of bunny jail, hopefully forever. There's a YouTube channel that I like to follow called Lennon the Bunny, I think it's called. And Lorelei, the bunny's owner, does a really wonderful job at helping other people uh, raise a bunny in their home that's free roaming and I can tell you right and truthfully and honestly that Agnes has been the most happiest when she's free roaming in our home and she and the cat get all get along very well but because Agnes isn't spayed she's territorial and she's her instinct is she wants to find a mate so she'll chase the cat even though the cat's a female cat and different species it's very amusing so we still let her out of bunny jail when the cat's not really around Heidi likes to go and she'll nap for like five hours straight so then I'll let the bunny come out if I'm not dying yarn or if I'm not busy and I can focus on her so yeah so far having Agnes has been definitely an additional thing to my day um, I'm enjoying being able to get some fiber from her and I have spun some yarn from her, not 100% Agnes. Um, I should weigh all of the fiber that I have of hers. I think the first stuff that I have from her is, it's fairly long, but it's probably not as long as it's going to be. I don't know. Uh, so far, um, so far she's fairly high maintenance for me because she's shedding a lot more than I thought she would and because she's got long fur it's it's uh it can mat so I have to be on top of it so that she doesn't end up with like clumps of mats in her underarms or behind her ears and she's a really really wonderful bunny so we're happy to have her in our life and it's an adjustment for sure uh and I can't wait till she gets spayed so that she can come out of bunny jail when she's in heat um, but when she's not in heat, she comes and she sits up on the couch and she does her zoomies and her binkies. We've taken her out in the backyard, but she has discovered how she can get underneath our deck and then she doesn't want to come out. So I've had to put her on into a harness onto a leash that's really long, but she doesn't seem to run around and do her zoomies and binkies quite like she was when she was off of a leash. <laughs> so I feel bad, but... Um, Soon she can be doing that in our house and she loves doing it on the couch and through a hallway. So yeah, I'm Yeah, I think that's all the fiber stuff I wanted to talk about. I have been getting into reading some books and I finished one book called Eight Perfect Murders by Something Swanson. That was a fun book. I like that. Thank you Paula from Autumn Poppy Designs for recommending it. And I'm reading a book that my dad has written. It's called Medusa Gone. It is about two aging superhuman beings that are at war. It's funny. It's kind of like, kind of like a Avengers war people, but not as intense and very funny. My dad's a very funny guy. Anyway, so Medusa Gone follows these two superhuman super beings who have entered the bodies of themselves in a, another universe and they're their younger selves and they're at war and Medusa is another super being that um, eventually comes on the scene. Anyways, so that comes to, I think he's, he's releasing that book in October and I'm reading through it to let him know my thoughts about it. And it's the first time reading a book, a full, full novel written by my dad. And it's interesting because, um, if you've ever written, written, read a book by someone that you know, you can hear, you can, he you can hear their character in, in the in the writing. Uh, I can hear my brothers in the writing. <laughs> I can also, I can also pick out the things of 
of his beliefs and of his heart in through the book. So it's an interesting experience reading a book written by someone that you know. So I'm reading that book. I've read other books. Uh, not very good at reviewing books, but the next one I'm hoping to read is this one. So if you know me on Instagram, you know I love sourdough and this book here was uh, recommended as a, an interesting novel and uh, Lois Clary is a software engineer who codes all day and collapses at night. Her human contact, limited to the two brothers who run the neighborhood hole in the wall from which she orders dinners every evening. Then disaster visa issues. The brothers quickly close up shop, but they have one last delivery for Lois. Their culture, a sourdough starter used to bake their bread. She must keep it alive, they tell her. Feed it daily, play it music, and learn to bake with it. Lois is no baker, but she could use a roommate, even if it is a needy colony of microorganisms. Soon, not only is she eating her own homemade bread, she's providing loaves daily to her employer's cafeteria. When the company chef urges her to take her product to the farmer's market, a whole new world opens up. So, <laughs> an interesting fiction book. I'm usually into lots of like murder mysteries and speculative fiction or or um, just uh, more books about life. Anyways, so if you are a reader and you're reading some books and you'd like to share what you're reading down below, please let me know. I'd um, love to hear your thoughts. And if anything really stuck out to you today in this episode uh, about the patterns, we have questions, I would love to answer them. And... Yeah, apart from life here in the Yukon, it is starting to turn fall. I have two trees in my front yard and their top leaves have not turned orange yet. So it's not yet fall or autumn. And we were gonna go take the kids moose hunting this weekend, but we decided it's gonna be a rainy weekend and it's gonna be miserable and our children will just not be happy. So we decided not to go and it's a long weekend. It's Labor Day weekend. So instead, they're going to have a sleepover with their grandparents tonight, and John and I will go on a date night. It's been a while. We often just go out, get a nice meal. Um, we used to go for long walks, but now we're just so, we're so old now. <laughs> we just come home to sit. And also, I want to knit. So <laughs> that's what's happening tonight. Um, yeah, and then this weekend, I don't know what we'll get up to. We've had some busy weekends, and I just want to relax and... Calvin and Sybil want to go um, trap a fairy. <laughs> they also want to make homemade granola bars because their latest Chirp magazine uh, was giving a recipe for making homemade granolas. What else? Yeah, I don't know. Hopefully it'll be a mix of fun adventures and relaxation at the same time. I dropped off Sybil at daycare this morning and she said to me, mommy, guess what? I can do three bars on the monkey bars at daycare. And I started to cry because she did that and I didn't get to see it. I didn't get to witness it. So feeling, feeling a little sad about missing out on some things or knowing Calvin's at school and learning some things and you know letting go of your child to go and learn some things on their own is I don't know dare I say hard but um I'm also very happy to allow him to have experiences and then I hope that he would come home and and share some about his life in the day of Calvin and uh, that he really thrives on life and is fearless um and kind and loving. I just really hope that for my children. So getting a little personal here, but anyways, yeah. <laughs> Young family raising children, hoping that they will be the best that they can be for the world that they're they're in. So anyways, normally I sit here and knit with you, but I guess maybe not today. Um, thank you so much for being here and I hope that you have a wonderful weekend and craft your heart out so yeah hope you're well and we'll catch you next time next time all right bye buddy
Hitness. Hitness, come here. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good girl. Good girl. Yeah. You're good girl, hey? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, want a treat? Yeah. Good bunny. Good bunny. Yeah. Lee. Okay.